All right, so this video here, we're going to continue our discussion um, in section, what are we in here, 4.2, on increasing and decreasing. Now, where we left off last time was that we had um, determined that if you have your derivative being greater than zero, this implied that f at x was increasing. and that if my derivative was less than zero, this implied that f at x was decreasing. And then remember, if we had f prime at x equals zero, this was really, for the most of the time, a critical number. I'm going to pause this here a second. I'm going to change my grid. I don't like, I thought I'd like the smaller grid, but I'm going to change this here a second. So, there we go. I like that one a little bit better. All right, so that's where we left off. And we did a couple examples, um, or at least one example. But I want to do an example that's not in the textbook, but you should definitely expect something like this on an exam or a quiz. So let's look at an example here. So I'm going to write it out here. Whoops, ah, go away. Sorry about that. My hand hit something on my tablet here, so I'll get back here. All right, so let's look at what we got here. So we have given that f prime of x is equal to x plus one squared times x minus three times x minus four times x plus two, and that f of x has domain negative 1.5 to five, answer the following. So we're asked to find the critical numbers, we're asked to find the intervals of increase and decrease, and we're asked to find which critical numbers correspond to extrema. And when we say that, of course, we're referring to relative extrema. Now, the most common mistake people make on this right away is they don't read the problem carefully. One thing that you should notice here, and when I said it out loud, most of you have probably captured it, was that what am I given here? I'm given f prime at x. I'm not given f at x, I've given f prime at x. So I'm not even going to have to take any derivatives here. Um, and in fact, part a, there's hardly any work to do. Um, now, for part A, we do have to be a tiny bit careful. So we know for critical numbers, we're looking for 0 is equaling f prime at x. And you'd get 0 is equal to x plus 1 
squared times x minus 3 times x minus 4 times x plus 2. Now, from this, it's pretty easy by inspection to write down what values make this 0. We can see that this is 0 for x equals negative 1, 3, 4, negative 2. But if we were to leave this as our answer, this is not correct answer for A. Because remember, critical numbers have to be in the domain of f at x. And the problem did state what the domain of f at x is. It stated that the domain of f at x is from negative 1.5 to 1.5. So I need to pick the values that are in that interval here. So my actual answer here are my critical numbers. Well, negative 1 is in the domain. So my critical numbers would be x equals negative 1. 3 is in the domain. 3. And then 4 is in the domain. 4. But notice here that negative 2 is not in my domain. So negative 2 is not a critical number. All right, so that's part A. Again, really no work to do. You just have to read the problem carefully and make sure not to make any kind of um, silly mistakes. Now for part B, we've this is going to proceed just like we've done on the other ones here, um, where we're going to get a sign diagram put together. And, and look at the sign diagram on this. So let us go ahead and look at part B here. I'm going to scroll this up a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my number line. And I'm going to go ahead and label my critical numbers here. Negative 1, 3, and then 4. And then I'm going to go ahead and just write f prime at x here, um, just because with my screen here, I can't see all of the things at once here. So I'm going to write f prime at x down again. Now we do have to be a little bit careful here. One thing I'm going to put in here is I'm going to put in a parenthesis here on my number line and put negative 1.5. And then I'm going to put a parenthesis here and put 5. Because my number line doesn't go on forever in this case, it ends. And the key thing is because we know we're going to be testing these x values in this number line here. We're going to be testing these to see if they're positive or negative. And the key thing here, though, is you have to pick a number in this interval. So what I'm saying is that for this first interval right here, I wonder if you guys can even see that little cursor moving, but I'm referring to the interval from negative 1.5 to negative 1. I can't just pick anything to the left of negative 1. For instance, I couldn't pick negative 2. I couldn't pick negative 3. I couldn't pick negative 4 because I have to pick something between negative 1.5 and negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and test x equals negative 1.25. Now in this case, I'm not even going to bother computing the actual number for the derivative. We're going to just look at the sign here. So I have f prime at negative 1.25. This is going to be negative 1.25 plus 1 squared times negative 1.25 minus 3 times negative 1.25 minus 4 times negative 1.25 plus 2. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to move this up again, is I'm going to go ahead and just track my signs here. So what do I mean by just track my signs? Well this is negative 1.25 plus 1, that's a negative number. So that's going to be a negative number squared. 
negative 1.25 minus 3 is another negative number. Negative 1.25 minus 4 is another negative number. And then I have negative 1.25 plus 2 is a positive number. Notice I'm actually not computing what the number is. You can compute the number, it, it's irrelevant. Um, but if you feel more comfortable computing the number, just compute the number. But what do we see here? Well, I've got a negative number squared times a negative times a negative. You can just, in essence, count up the number of negatives. You have one, two, three, four negatives. We have an even number of negatives. That means I'm going to be a positive result, ultimately. So this is positive. So that means on this interval, it's positive, so it's going up. Now we just have to play the same game with all the other intervals. So let's go ahead and do that. So the next interval between negative 1 and 3, I think the obvious one that would be easy to, answer, to, to use would be x equals 0. Then you have f prime at 0 is equal to 1 squared times negative 3 times negative 4 times 2, um, which Again, I don't have to compute the number in this case, but I'll go ahead and compute it just because it's easy enough. This would get me, and to emphasize, it's positive 24. So that means I'm still going up. And then we'll go ahead and test the next interval. I have to pick something between 3 and 4, so let's do 3.5. And so f at 3.5, f prime at 3.5 is equal to 3.5 plus 1 squared, 3.5 minus 3, 3.5 minus 4, 3.5 plus 2. And then again, if we do the same kind of idea here, this would be a positive number squared. This would be a positive number. 3.5 minus 4 is negative. 3.5 plus 2 is positive. And so we have this resulting here. So this would give me, oops, not keeping track of my signs. This obviously gives me a negative. So that means I'm going down. And then finally, I'm going to squeeze it off to the side here so I don't have to lose my sign diagram. We need to test something between 4 and 5. So I think it makes sense to test x equals 4.5. And so we'd have f prime at 4.5. And I'm just going to do some of the arithmetic in my head. So you'd have 5.5 squared, 1.5, because 4.5 minus 3. 4.5 minus 4 would be 0.5 and then 6.5. But the key thing is these are all positive, so I'd wind up with a positive. And so that means I'm going back up. And so I'm going to just kind of remember this here um, and then write my answer down here. So I might have to scroll back and forth here just because sometimes memory is not great. So where's the intervals of increasing? Well, intervals of increasing, negative 1.5 to negative 1, negative 1 to 3, and 4 to 5. Oops. Negative 1.5 to negative 1, negative 1 to 3, and then 4 to 5. Now, some of you might say, well, wait, can't I just write um, this as simply one interval? Couldn't I just write this as negative 1.5 to 3? Technically, the answer is no, because at negative 1, the derivative is 0. So it's not increasing or decreasing with the way we've defined things in this book. However, if you were to write negative 1.5 to 3 and then 4 to 5. So if you were to write this as an answer here, I would accept both of these as a correct answer. 
So either one I would select, uh, accept as a correct answer. So either the black one or the red one. And then of course the intervals of decreasing are the only other ones remaining, which are that we are decreasing from 3 to 4. Now before we finish this problem out, one thing I want to point out here is notice that I'm not going all the way down to negative infinity with my intervals of increase and decrease. And again, that's because if I scroll back to the beginning of this problem here, my domain that I was given was only from negative 1.5 to 5. So I'm not increasing the entire, I, I'm not considering the entire real numbers for my domain. Now part C, which cortical numbers correspond to extrema, well we can see here that this is going to be a max and this is going to be a min. So let's just write that down as our answer. So for part C, x equals 3 corresponds to a max <coughs> and x equals 4 corresponds to a min. Okay, so we're not done with this section yet, but I when I make videos I don't like making them 50 minutes long, so um, We'll have a couple more videos that you need to watch um, for class, um, but this is it for this example here. All right.